humans have made two confusing words, good and bad. Or we can say that beautiful or ugly. But how can we say something or consider something as beautiful or ugly by its look or by its contribution towards nature? Hello, everyone. I am Purnima Devi Barman, and I am a wildlife biologist from Assam. And today, I would like to take you to a journey of conserving a bird, a bird which was considered as a bad omen or a disease carrier or a pest. And by collaborating with local communities, we have converted the bird into a symbol of pride and a cultural icon. So you can see the Hargila bird. And before I uh, share my journey, today I would like to do an exercise with all of you. Are you ready? Yes. Would you like to join me? Yes. OK. Then please at first see the bird. And now I would request you uh, to put your hands in this poster. Everyone, please. Yeah, and now imagine this as the beak of the bird. And imagine yourself as a huge bird. And now I'm going to do a sound, a sound that is by, done by the bird. So I'll do a demo first, and you can join me. Are you ready? Yeah. OK. At first, please say with me, tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Now please say fast. Tuck, 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 tuck,
with a person, a man was cutting down a huge nesting tree, which was hosting nine nests, and nine baby birds fell down. I saw there a few birds were alive and a few birds died. Being a mother, I got pain, and I dared to speak to the person why he was doing so. The person was so angry on me, the situation became worse. He, re he reacted on me, yelling at me, and his neighbors joined, and they started surrounding me, clapping at me, whistling at me, and they started mocking me. And I started talking to them about the importance of Hargila. Then they told that I, I was there to lecture on them. And then someone of them told that this bird doesn't need to leave. It's a bad omen, or an unhygienic bird, or a messy, smelly bird. That situation had a deep impact on my life. I realized that what I'm going to do with my PhD, my research would not be enough. And I realized that night I couldn't sleep, and I realized that I have to change the mindset of people. Yes, change the mindset of people. And then I started visiting nesting colonies, and um, yeah, then nest people and people. And then I realized that these birds breeds in, um, in, in they, do, they don't go to the protected area. Like some other species, they don't get government protection. They breed in the villages. Trees are the privately owned properties. So only the willingness and support of the tree owners, communities can help them, can save them from extinction. I realized that our people would have to be their government, authority, or parents. Yes, parents. A kind of uh, ownership feeling. A kind of ownership feeling which was striking my mind all the time. Yeah, then with this ownership feeling idea in my mind, I developed a PR plan with many target groups in the community, like working with nursery owners, working with children, schools, women, and um, fishermen, youths, and everyone, and then administration like police, forest department, administration. Yeah. So uh, then I started inviting our tree owners to the public meeting, felicitated them in public meeting, honoring them. And I realized that the conservationists should be consistent all the time. We can't stop. We might have problems, challenges, we can't stop. Conservation is a restless movement. And I also realized that we conservationists have to be as humble as them. We should respect them. We should be a part of them. And I transformed myself to a community member. So uh, when I was inviting our people to our meeting, I always found that women participation was so less. A woman is a creator. She is, she is a nurturer. And she can change the society. She has, she has that capacity. But why our women don't come to our meeting? Their participation was so less. It was a question all the, all the time. And I started meeting our women. And then they kept telling me that they have many household chores. And they can't come to my meeting. It is not their priority. And they have to cook for their children, for their husband. Then I got a solution from them. I started inviting our women to our traditional cooking festivals or cooking competitions. And it worked like anything. It worked. They started coming and joined me. And we befriended. Yeah, we befriended and we spoke about Hargila. So now I would like to share a very important event of us, which is very close to my heart. Hargila Baby Sour, or Hargila Panchamrit in Assamese, or in Hindi, Hargila God Bharai. Yes, we celebrate Hargila Baby Sour exactly like the way we celebrate for our Assamese expecting mother following the same rituals. I will tell a story. One day I was there. I saw a man cutting down a nesting tree when the Hargila birds were laying eggs. Then another day, I saw a man putting, a, a, he put some smokes under the nesting tree when the Hargila birds had, baby, had babies. And then another day, I was invited to a ritual ceremony 
uh, or yeah, to, to a ceremony where, uh, where there was a celebration going on and it was a baby shower of a woman. That day, the, her near and loved ones showered blessings on her, showered gifts. So she got such a respect. Then I got a solution and I started inviting our women to our Hargila baby shower. When I spoke our women about Hargila baby shower, they laughed a lot and they started mingling. What? Hargila baby shower? But they loved it and they started coming like anything. And they joined and they became such, such a part, such a part of this baby shower or, or of this Hargila family. They could relate Hargila to them and it worked a lot. And uh, then slowly and slowly and spontaneously, we didn't do any planning. Suddenly, we formed the Hargila Army, a all-women army team. All our rural women converted into Hargila Army or conservationists. And I'm very proud now today, I'm very proud to mention that uh, we have more than 10,000 women who have placed to be Hargila Army, and that is incredible. And I invite you all to come to our village and to meet our Hargila Army. We have 400 women who are active forefront leaders. They work as daily basis. I am sure they will inspire you. So uh, you might have a question, are we only working with women? My answer would be, when a Hargila Army woman pledged to be Hargila Army, her pledge include to bring her children, her husband, everyone into our effort. And this way we create a people's movement in Assam. And our work is an integration of science, pride, culture, tradition, empowerment. And we are very infectious. You can see that we even go to the wedding with our Hargila campaign. And our people love it. And it works. And it gives me hope. And uh, I'm, I'm here to share with you about our Hargila rally in a community Gita Bhagavad procession. And this way we offer prayer to our Hargila for the well-being of Hargila. And this kind of effort works a lot in community. Now, about our future, about our children, about our youths. Children are our driving force. And we collaborate with our local schools to motivate our youngsters. And we collaborate with the teachers of the school, local schools. And I, I believe that conservation is collaboration. And our children, and I think their grandchildren, have the equal right to see our Hargila and many other species. And in our Hargila Learning Center, we mold our youngsters to our to youngsters, to Hargila lovers. And our children, they are so innocent and so curious. They inspire me a lot and keep me going on. So um, now my definition of conservation is changed. What is conservation? Conservation is all about people, people and people. Uniting people, building ownership, and nurturing our young minds. So that is the definition of conservation for me now. And our work is not only saving Hargila birds, but it is empowering our women and creating livelihood opportunities for our women, for many families in Assam. And uh, you can see, you can see our Hargila army. I am now also I'm celebrating our Hargila army. So you can see Hargila birds in my attire. So uh, our products uh, that our women weave, our Assamese textiles, are globally available. And our women are already weavers, but they, now they are weaving for a cause. And that makes them feel very special. And it's a sustainable solution of conservation. So now, you might have a question. What is the result? What is the impact of our work, of this people's movement on the bird? Yes, results are rewarding. Our tree owners developed an ownership feeling for the bird. They have accepted the bird. And in 2007, when I was alone, there were, there were only 27 nests. But now, with support of villagers and communities, we have now 250 nests in the village. 
and these villages now are the breeding, uh, now are the highest or largest breeding colony in the world, and that gives me hope. And uh, yeah, and one of the important thing I would like to share that from 2010, not a single tree has been cut down in the village, and that gives me hope. So, and uh, we have rehabilitated 400 baby birds successfully in the wild, and for this we collaborate with forest department, district administration, and police, and our youth play a vital role in this rescue part, and I am very thankful to all of them. So now, what is my conservation recipe for all of you? So consistency is the key. I get an alarm from my Hargila bird all the time that a conservation should be, a, a, a conservationist should be consistent all the time. It is a restless effort. And in my 15 years of time, I faced, I, I was going through many obstacles, gender barriers, but I never gave up. Yeah, it's a restless campaign. And people believe in actions, not in words. Our actions speak louder. And uh, by incorporating tradition and culture, we can change the fate of a species from a bad omen to a cultural icon. And communities have the power to change the world. Please believe in them. Please bring them to the forefront as forefront conservation leaders. And the magic will happen if we involve our rural women. They are the solution. And please try to build their leadership and enhance their leadership. And it will work a lot. Now, I'm very proud to mention that in 15 years of journey, slowly and slowly, Har Hargila becoming a star. I think you can feel that. Yes, Hargila becoming a star. And they are getting, Hargila is getting the same attention, equal attention, like many other mega species. And it makes me cry out of happiness. And what my Hargila teach me is that community conservation is a never-ending process. Today, I commit here that I would continue my work with Hargila for the rest of my life until my last breath. Thank you so much, everyone.